Gary B. Smith, president of the Kadena Group. He's also a Fox Business contributor and Michael Lee, founder of Michael Lee's Strategy. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Gary B., I love how the White House is now saying that they use that word transitory or temporary, but they're measuring it in quarters. Well, how many quarters are we talking about? Like, is this like we could say, oh, we could measure the entire decade of the 70s in quarters if we wanted to. Exactly, and pretty soon they're going to be knocking down to days. You know, inflation wasn't bad on Tuesday, might be worse <laughs> on Wednesday. Look, we have, I, I the, the whole transitory thing has been ludicrous to me from the beginning. You got the Fed have with ultra low rates. You got the government, what do we spend on COVID relief, the CARES Act, the Paycheck Protection, $3 trillion we have? We got an infrastructure plan coming down the line. You had just a few months ago, you had household savings at an all-time high. We're flooded with money. And, and you know, as Edward just said, gas prices are up 56% over the year. You can't almost afford anything at the supermarket. Forget about vegetables and, and, and uh, even fish right now. Off the charts. And it's only going to get worse because this tight job market is going to cause restaurants and everyone else to have to increase wages to pay people. Those increased wages are going to chase fewer and fewer goods. Mike, tell me why this is it, it is temporary. Like, why would you think that I, with the money supplies increased 23 percent annualized rates since February of last year, the Fed balance sheet has gone from f- a little more than four trillion to eight trillion. And there's no sign that uh, the chairman Powell and the Fed are going to pump the brakes. Yeah, Dagan, great question. Okay, when everybody looks at the money supply increasing, they don't look at the velocity of money, and that's how quick it makes goes through the system. And a lot of the money printing that the Federal Reserve does simply sits in commercial checking accounts at banks and pushes the stock market higher and other financial assets higher, but doesn't really contribute to 70s style inflation. And we saw that from 2010 to 2020. Okay, the largest contributor to inflation right now is car prices. And those car prices is due to a chip shortage, and that will resolve itself. Look, it's a lot easier to shut an economy, a worldwide economy down, than to turn it in, than to turn it back on. And what you're seeing is a snapback in the economy that happened last year has taken everyone off guard. Global supply chains are completely out of whack. You have these enhanced unemployment benefits, which is making it harder for people to get to work and get goods on shelves. And as a result, prices are higher. I, I'm firmly in the camp that this is temporary. I think when you look at comparables 12 months from now versus from 12 months ago, it's going to tell a very different story. I do think there's a tremendous amount of negative effects from all this money printing. However, I don't just don't think that 70 style inflation is one of them. Uh, Gary B., but uh, it, expectations are so critical. If people expect higher inflation, then they get higher inflation. And you had the New York Fed survey came out that inflation expectations, the rate hit the highest level since 2013. 13, number one. And number two, you also have more and more government spending. You were talking about that. It was, it was nearly $6 trillion in total spending, not including what Biden and company want to do, excluding what the Federal Reserve has done. But now, in the next few days, you have that $300 per month um, additional child tax credit, and you know that's going to be permanent. This is beginning to be a replay of additional entitlements, which is what we saw in the 60s that gave way to inflation of the 70s. Absolutely, Dave. And look, we have the biggest spending since the government spending since World War II. That money has to go somewhere. Per Mike's point, it's not going to just sit in savings accounts. You talk about expectations. People are going to get out there and spend it. And when they see that they can't get things, eventually someone's going to crack and they're going to pay more. I had a friend that lives next door, that got a quote a year ago to redo part of his house. He just went back and got to see, decided not to do it, went back, and he now he says it's three times as much. I said, what are you going to do? He goes, I have to get this done. I'm going to have to pay. And he's not the only one out there. He has the money because we talked about the, the household savings rate. He feels flush because his house, house is worth a lot more. People are going to say, you know what? 
I'm going to get it done. I have a job. I can go get another job if I want. The job market's great if you're, uh, you know, looking for one. The money's going to go somewhere. It's gonna, like I said, it's just going to chase these goods. And per Mike's point, the, you know, we're not going to just all of a sudden make a lot more cars. People are going to go out there and they're going to pay more for cars. Right. And Mike, in all this, the f- people who get screwed are lower and middle income Americans whose wages maybe aren't keeping up with the skyrocketing price of gasoline or cars. And I, you go somewhere like Los Angeles or even here in New York, there are lines of dozens of mm-hmm. people outside of luxury goods stores, people waiting to buy $5,000, $7,000 handbags. Maybe it's yeah. time to cut the stimmy. Mike? Yeah, yeah, look, I, I, Dagan, I, I, don't, I don't think we need any more additional fiscal stimulus at this point. Um, but, like, look, you know, you have a, um, a, a government that's extremely left wing with a very far left agenda. But I, I will say uh, the bond market is telling a very different story than a lot of these headlines. Uh, the difference between the two year and the 30 year Treasury, so the slope of the yield curve, is at 180 basis points, which signifies uh, a pretty healthy growth rate and a little bit of inflation going forward. Forward, but that's down from close to 230 uh, just in just in mid March. So we have seen a, a total and complete reversal from the bond market that thinks a lot of the fiscal stimulus and Green New Deal and infrastructure, all that stuff is DOA, and that a lot of this and the, the bond market is literally saying that this inflation is transitory. So I may be the odd man out on this panel, but I do have a pretty big 800 pound gorilla that agrees with me. Odd person. <laughs> even though, even though I got my person, hair pulled right? back, I mean, my hair is shorter right now than yours is, <laughs> Michael. But I'll add this, Gary. I will give you final word on this. Crime will soon be replaced by inflation when it comes to the midterm. So this far left agenda might very well be uh, the, the put the, have the kibosh put on it if the, if the House and the Senate flip. But those are the two biggest issues for um, Look, Americans. I, I agree with you. Look, I, I, am, I, I agree with Mike. I'm all for looking to staff, looking at numbers. But this is one time you just got to look anecdotally. You walk outside and buy gas, groceries. There's not a person out there saying, my gosh, this inflation is killing me, and I don't see it going away. And that means more inflation. Gary B., great to see you. Michael Lee, you as well, sir. Threatening.